Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. We're gonna give just a couple more minutes for some other folks to join the webinar and then we'll get started right after that. Okay, it looks like some people are starting to just um, slowly trickle in, so we'll get started here and um, we'll, we'll get going with the webinar for today. So I'm Kristen Noble. Um, I want to welcome you all um, to the webinar that we have put together today. Um, it's a cooperative webinar between Harris Seeds and Harris Moran Seed Company. So we're really excited to have you with us. Uh, the topic will be how to pick 10 perfect pumpkin varieties to enhance your roadside stand or patch. So for today's webinar, the webinar will be recorded and it will be uploaded to the Harris Seeds YouTube channel later this week. So if you aren't able to stay on for the entire um, session, you're willing, you would have the ability to go back and watch that at a later time. Um, all of attendees are muted and your video isn't shared but you are able to communicate us and present your questions to the panelists through the Q&A section. So any questions, please submit to Q&A. We'll be addressed at the end and we'll do our best to address as many questions as possible. If we don't get to your question during the time of the webinar, uh, we will follow up with you afterwards to answer whatever questions you may have had. Um, all of the varieties that we talk about today will be available for more information on the Harris Seeds website and we'll provide specific uh, information at the end of the presentation of where to find those. Um, we also will have a um, promo item available. So if you stay through the end of the webinar and you participate in the survey at the end, uh, you'll, your name will be entered to have a free um, gift. So we hope you'll stay through to the end and participate in the webinar. Um, we also have an offer presented by Harris Seeds at the end of the presentation, so we'll have more about that to come. Um, we have several speakers today. Myself from Harris Seeds, I'm Kristen Noble, the Vegetable Product Manager. We're happy to host several members of the team from the Harris Moran Seed Company, who you also see on the screen. They'll be, pre be presenting the varieties that we'll talk about today. Michael Ferlito is a technical sales representative with HM Klaus. John Moyette is the sales manager for the Northeast USA for HM Klaus. And James Daly is the current pumpkin breeder with HM Klaus. So we're very excited to have um, all of their knowledge on these varieties and to be able to share that with you today. And with that, I'll pass it on to Mike to get us started. Thank you, Kristen. Uh, appreciate the introduction and appreciate the opportunity uh, uh, to join up uh, and uh, join forces on this webinar today. Uh, really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you about Harris Moran pumpkins and working closely with our uh, distribution partner, Harris Seeds. Um, the weather's starting to turn out there and we're getting excited about planting pumpkins. So, so here we are today. So uh, we just want to quick run over the agenda that we'll be uh, looking at today over the, the webinar. Um, first, we just want to kind of tell the story about um, our roadside ready pumpkins. It's a new initiative we started a couple of years ago, just trying to get some awareness out there, get the word about, about some of our varieties that have done really well for the roadside market and that roadside pat, pumpkin patch. I'm um, going to go into what makes, uh, what are some of the attributes, um, what makes a roadside ready pumpkin, uh, what makes it unique and uh, why you should be interested. 
And then we're going to go through some varieties. We got 10 great, uh, exciting varieties that uh, uh, really are right at home in that roadside patch. And then uh, we have a little tease. Uh, we have some new stuff in the pipeline that we'll touch on quick. Uh, a couple uh, grow some grower testimonials because uh, there's no there's no excuse. For it. it's, it's always better just to get right from the horse's mouth. So we'll have some uh, grower testimonials, and then we'll uh, jump right into some questions. So with that, jump in the next slide. Um, just a little a quick background. Um, Harris Moran uh, Vegetable Seeds, we're, we're a brand of HM Klaus. Um, we're headquartered here in the USA, uh, in Davis and Modesto, California. We have research, station, research and breeding stations in California, Florida, and Wisconsin. Uh, in addition to that, we have uh, research folks, product development folks, sales folks all over the US doing countless trial work, production, breeding efforts, all of it's right here. Uh, we really have an amazing team here and it's, uh, it's really been a pleasure to work with the team we have here and we've really uh, made great strides to be the pumpkin company. Um, we dedicate endless hours to the breeding and trialing efforts uh, to ensure that uh, each pumpkin that we bring to market meets the Harris Moran standard. Um, so when we talk about roadside roadie pumpkins, what do we mean? Well, H, we, Harris Moran has a very large lineup of pumpkins. Uh, everything under the sun that you could think of, we offer. Uh, but what we want to focus on today is a smaller group of pumpkins that you can use in your roadside stand or your patch that'll set you apart from your competition. Uh, while we're only presenting a small cross-section uh, of our product lineup today, we do encourage you to, to visit our, our, our website or the Harris Seeds website uh, to make sure you take in all the other varieties that we have to offer that are in the pumpkin lineup. Um, so our breeders, product development, and all the way to sales, folks like myself, uh, we've come up with this, this uh, list of 10 varieties that are very interesting and specifically designed for the roadside market to, you know, while we, the standard uh, jack, orange jack-o-lantern is uh, the uh, backbone to your stand, there's going to be some mix and some flavor in there that you can add to uh, build in, bring in extra business, gain excitement, and uh, really help you be successful in the end, because that's, that's what we're here for. Um, no, we'll stay on the previous slide, please. Um, these varieties, deliver, um, a lot of the varieties we're going to go over give the consistent yield that you've come to ex expect from Harris Moran, the disease resistance that you've come to expect from us. And then we want to layer in the unique look that your customers want uh, with these 10 pumpkins that we're going to talk about today. Um, really, what the story about today is diversifying, um, creating interest. And we found in our experience that the diversity, the diversity and the different in, difference in varieties that you have draw the crowds, creates more interest in your operation, uh, draws in new customers and just catches people's eyes. So they keep coming back year after year. Um, it, whether you're a, a grower yourself or you have a roadside stand or if you're just buying in for a patch uh, that you own, uh, we encourage you to take these varieties into consideration ask if you're not a grower ask your grower for these varieties by name um, they're available through harris seeds and they'll set you up uh, we can go on the next slide i'll turn it over to john maliat he is the regional business manager for harris moran uh, thanks mike yeah and uh as mike said i'm uh, glad to be with you today and uh glad to be part of this webinar and we thank uh harris seeds for partnering up with us to uh present this uh, cross-section of varieties to you. And um, I think Mike gave me a little too much credit. I'm a Northeast Regional Manager, which is uh, from Minnesota on East and then down through Mid-Atlantic. So uh, just uh, glad to be here. And uh, I've been around pumpkins all my life. You know, we started raising them on family farm and then uh, kind of got into the seed business here with them. So uh, pumpkins are, are a passion of mine. and. Uh, they're a very uh, unique product and uh, one of the few ornamental lines that, uh, you know, HM Close, uh, you know, deals in. So it's kind of a unique, uh, unique species and unique product uh, within Harris Moran. So uh, they do have 
we do have full support on the breeding and the research side from the company. And uh, thanks to our uh, past breeder, Ted Superak, and then uh, James Daly is our new breeder who's coming through with some uh, exciting material. So uh, the legacy will, will continue. And uh, just some uh, overall attributes about the uh, Harris Bryan pumpkins. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, the, the most uh, distinguishing characteristic and in uniform characteristic is probably our deep orange color and then the handles. Uh, the handles uh, at maturity are, a, you know, a black uh, green, very sturdy and, uh, you know, don't dry back, you know, if they're, uh, if they're pruned, you know, off the vine and um, so they're very stable. So that uh, makes a difference if you're uh, buying pumpkins from a grower and uh, one of the, uh, the other attributes beyond the, you know, the marketable yield that the grower is going to uh, realize is that uh, the reseller at, uh, you know, roadside stand or pumpkin patch or uh, agritainment venue in the fall is, uh, you know, they, uh, they store well, they have good shelf life and, you um, they do, although they do so quickly, uh, if you do get uh, some that stay around a little bit, the, you know, the quality will hold up and uh, it will, will be maintained. So they'll be marketable for, uh, for, for weeks, you know, on end into the, into the fall. So uh, another uh, background on that is the uh, powdery mildew tolerance that um, I think pretty much all of our varieties offer. Uh, the plant uh, resists the disease and, uh, grows through it and the uh, fruit, you know, matures into uh, dark orange with a great handle that's, uh, you know, fought off the powdery mildew and, uh, you know, all translates into marketable yield. And uh, so I think uh, as a grower, you're going to realize the most dollars per acre. Um, you know, it's got good yield and a high percentage of that is marketable. So you'll be able to uh, turn those into cash and, uh, and market them. And then uh, if you are a reseller, as Mike said, um, we uh, suggest you ask, you know, your grower this time of year to, uh, to raise, you know, Harris brand pumpkins, you know, by name, by brand. So you know that uh, you'll be getting, uh, you know, top quality product, um, you know, no matter what the variety um, within Harris brand, you'll be, uh, as long as uh, you recognize that Harris brand name and, uh, and push that through to your grower, then, uh, you know, you'll be getting top quality. And then on the grower end, you know, it's, uh, doesn't have, have to be said that, uh, you know, Harris brand pumpkins uh, that you get from your dealer sales rep, you know, especially at Harris Seeds will, uh, you know, give you the top quality and, and most marketable yield. And also, as Mike said, um, we do have a uh, unique lineup. We, uh, for years, we concentrated on the uh, orange carvers and some of the smaller ones. And uh, we got into, you know, some hard shell varieties here and there, and then some uh, munchkin types that gave us a little bit more variety. But uh, here in the last five years, as we walk through the breeder trials, you know, we just see something new every year and we all get surprised and it's, uh, a rite of passage in the fall when uh, we walk through the breeder trial and say, wow, look at that one, you know, and uh, so it's a lot of exciting stuff coming and uh, makes a lot of uh, diversity. So uh, can we get to the next slide? Okay. And as we said, uh, this is kind of a unique cross section of our varieties. We've got some uh, other mainline varieties such as uh, Kratos and uh, you know, and such, and, uh, and Zeus that will, uh, you know, add to these, but, uh, you know, from the Cronus all the way down to the little Pumpkimon that we're, you know, looking at today, it's a great cross-section from uh, very large, Cronus is our largest, and uh, down to Apprentice, which is uh, one of our smaller ones, and some things in between that uh, will give you a unique look, uh, diversified size, uh, colors, warts, um, different shapes, uh, you know, flat and uh, small and various colors. So it will give you a, uh, a good look on your, you know, roadside stand or to your, uh, for your, your shipping growers out there, we've got uh, something for everybody that uh, can really uh, give your, uh, give your uh, growers and uh, roadside resellers some diversity on, on what's offered and uh, make your uh, display stand out from, from all the others. So um, I think we're ready to uh, move on and I'll put
put it back over to Mike and he can talk about a few of these varieties in detail. Thanks, John. Um, I think quick before we head right and in, dive into the varieties, I think we wanted to take a couple polls uh, just to kind of get a better feeling for the folks we have on the webinar today, if we want to throw those up. Um, the first one here is um, select the, bet, the option that best describes you. Uh, this is how I primarily sell pumpkins. Are you a roadside stand, pumpkin patch, wholesale to chain stores, or wholesale to produce auctions? Just take a quick second. Appreciate your feedback there. Okay, so looks like we're dead on. A lot of roadside and a lot of pumpkin patch. Good to see. Uh, next question is, describe your experience with pumpkins. I am new to growing pumpkins. I have grown pumpkins for a few years. I am very experienced in growing pumpkins and I do not grow pumpkins. I purchase full grown pumpkins for my operation. Okay, a little mix there. Okay, I think we'll move right into the varieties then. Uh, like, like John just alluded to, you know, we really have a wide variety of, uh, of different varieties uh, under the Harris Moran lineup, but we're just going to touch on a 10 quick here today. Um, we're going to kind of work our way up in size uh, in the traditional yellow, and then we'll switch over to some specialties and uh, uh, the second half of the variety uh, discussion. So the first one we wanted to talk about is Crunchkin. This is one of our hard shells, nice, uh, you know, handheld size, you know, right around a half a pound, has a re really unique mottled color to it, um, really nice stem attachment. Um, you know, you can trim the stem really anywhere you want, and that stem stays on for a good long time. Uh, this variety is a little more of a bush type plant, um, very high yielding. Uh, I've had a lot of good success with this. Um, these are, this is a variety that, you know, can have a place well past, uh, say, uh, you know, Halloween, right? So you can hang on to this variety, throw it on the table at uh, Thanksgiving, nice decoration. Uh, we found these to have a very long shelf life if you clean them up after you get them out of the field. Um, and this is a perfect one for kids too. I mean, this is just very easy for a, a toddler or so, a younger kid just to grab right a hold of. Um, you also see these thrown in uh, mesh sacks, mesh bags, kind of bundled together, buy a bag of five or so. Uh, a lot of options, a uh, little different than what you normally see too, especially with that modeling color. So going to the next variety is Apprentice. Um, this is a, a nice, small, smooth, hard shell, uh, quite small, almost like a little hand grenade there. Nice, smooth, smoothness to it. Um, this one could be a, an easy one that you could, uh, you could try and paint on because of the smooth uh, exterior. It's not deeply ribbed. Um, again, nice handheld, perfect for kids. Um, this is a little on the earlier side, but nice, uniform, round size. Um, uh, a little different than uh, some of the other ones you, you see on the most, uh, if you see, you really don't see these in a grocery store or somewhere else. These are kind of unique to stands, I think, for the most part. And next one is field trip. So as the name explains, as, as the name suggests, this is a, this is a perfect one for the kids, uh, any kind of field trip coming through your patch. Um, this is the one that you're gonna, every kid's gonna walk out of your stand with. Um, nice, big, large handle that has a very good attachment. Um, you can swing the pumpkin around by that handle for the most part and it's gonna stay on there. Um, it's right around five pounds in weight, sometimes a little under, uh, but really nice handle, a good attachment. Um, this is something that, um, you know, you could uh, 
put alongside some of the stackers that are out there and getting more and more popular nowadays. Um, gets your attention with that nice dark long handle. Um, for me, uh, in seeing these in trials and in, com in commercial production, very consistent and very high yielding. So you're really getting your bang for the buck with these. You can really fin fit some, fill some bins if that's your, what you're looking to do. Um, just a really attractive uh, pumpkin for your, for your roadside stand. So next one. So this one's a new one within the last handful of years. This one's called Orange Sunrise. And so what this variety brings to the table, you know, it just looks like a regular jack-o'-lantern, but what this is, it's what we call the precocious, uh, precocious, precocious pumpkin. So while most pumpkins start out in, as a green color and then mature to an orange color, this actually goes from yellow to orange. So what does that mean to you? Uh, a very short day length. Um, most year, you know, a, a typical year, you're right around 85 to 90 days. Last year, we had an exceptional year around me here in upstate New York, and we saw it uh, well under 80 days. That, that's not typical, but just to give you an idea. So, so what can that do for you? First to market. This past season with COVID, I think uh, one big thing that I noticed uh, with COVID and roadside stands, I saw pumpkins out earlier and earlier. You know, it's something we've kind of seen over the last few years, but this past year in particular, <clears throat> we saw pumpkins out a lot earlier than we normally would. So this gives you an opportunity to come to market a little earlier because you have the shorter day length uh, in that respect. Another thing is you can use this as a rain rain gap pumpkin. If we get into a very wet spring, this gives you an option to come in a little later uh, with a nice variety like this. It's a little bit of a brighter color, nice bright orange, um, very high yielding, right around 15 pounds, really nice handle on it. We've had a lot of success with it and it does have uh, intermediate pottery mildew resistance. On to the next. So, here, so here's the one. If you think about pumpkin patch, this is it. This is Cronus. Uh, this is our extra large variety. Um, just the quintessential jack-o'-lantern. I mean, just look at the picture. I'm sure if anybody's growing pumpkins, you've either seen this, heard of it, bought it, had it at your patch at some point. But again, 25 pounds plus, if you give it some room, the sky's the limit really on the size. You really can get a really solid big pumpkin up into the 50 pound range if you're giving it some space. Really nice dark orange color, nice ribbing, and look at the handle, just a huge monstrous classic Harris Moran handle. I don't, if that's not a perfect jack-o'-lantern, I don't know what it is, but uh, you really, if you have some of those sitting out front, you, you just can't miss them. So this really rounds out some of, you know, if you were looking towards the jack-o'-lantern on the big side, this really rounds out the whole program and just really uh, a great variety that we've had really good success with in the past. Now I'm gonna turn it over to John. Uh, and, and we'll cover or the second half of our varieties. Okay, thanks, Mike. Uh, let's see, next we have uh, mini warts, and uh, this is a very unique product, and it's uh, in that three to five pound range, uh, semi bush type. And uh, as you can see there in the picture, it's uh, got some pretty uh, fantastic looking warts on it. They're uh, they start out green, and the uh, background background of the fruit is uh, is that dark orange and it's got a great handle and uh, it's a very good companion to uh, a variety with I'll talk about here in a second is uh, warty goblin but uh, with uh, with many warts here it's just a uh, nice uh, small size class and uh, can be set out on uh, you know mixed displays and uh, the warts uh, as they are pronounced green at harvest, they will uh, turn orange, um, you know, in storage uh, over the course of a few weeks, and then they do kind of harden off, and then that's uh, the last, uh, you know, pass through Thanksgiving. So it's a good uh, decorative, uh, decorative pumpkin mix. Um, I don't believe uh, it's very carvable because that uh, background is is pretty hard shell, so uh, it's more of a, it's not really a carver. It's just more of a, a decorative uh, ornamental. And they also uh, have a great handles on them for uh, durability and storage. So uh, let's see, we can uh, move on to the next one. 
which is a warty goblin. And uh, this variety is uh, pretty early. It's another fantastic looking variety. And it was uh, quite a uh, quite a sight to be seen in the first uh, breeder trials. We saw this in, you know, years ago, we knew we had something unique here. And uh, it also has that great, uh, you know, hair sparring handle on it. And this one's gonna run anywhere from eight to 20 pounds. And uh, it's uh, got the uh, pretty hard shell background again. So it's um, going to uh, be kind of tough to carve. So you probably just use it as an ornamental. And uh, the warts do, uh, you know, turn orange as it does with the mini warts, you know, a few weeks into storage, but it does have a very unique look, um, you know, early on when you harvest it. And it is uh, early maturing. So uh, we do, for the growers uh, out there, we do uh, recommend that you, uh, you know, harvest it when it's, when it's ready. So the warts uh, don't break down. So if you get it out of the field, you know, those warts will, uh, will stay nice. And then if you uh, have good, uh, you know, leaf cover and so forth, um, you know, it'll keep the uh, product shaded. So it's uh, kind of important to, uh, you know, take care of the vines on this one. So the, uh, the warts are, you know, stay in good condition. Uh, let's see, we can uh, move on to the next one. Uh, Warty Gnome, uh, this is another unique product um, that we came across. Uh, I think this one's been on the market for about three years. It's got a uh, very long dark green handle on it and it, uh, the handle can be cut to uh, just about any length that uh, you prefer. And this one has uh, a little bit more of a flat shape, uh, four to six pounds. It's got a more shallow wart um, profile on it. The warts are not as pronounced. And it's got a kind of a yellow background with, uh, with orange stripes. And it is uh, fairly early in maturity. And these, uh, these fruits do, uh, you know, bring some uh, good value at the, uh, especially the city farmers markets. And uh, some of these smaller ornamentals are, you know, easy to carry. And, uh, you know, if you do market them at a farmer's market where the uh, customer has to carry the you know, produce with them for you know ways after visiting your stand uh, they are uh, transportable in bags and so forth so we can uh, move on to the next one next one is uh, specter and um, this is a uh, another unique product from us it's um very nice shape it's got a true pumpkin shape with a true pumpkin handle and it's a uh, a creamy color. It will be a, a bright white at um, harvest time, but after a couple of days, it will kind of fade into kind of a creamy color. So it is, uh, it is, uh, we put it in that uh, ornamental class that, uh, you know, that light, uh, lighter white to a creamy color that, um, you know, is pretty unique on the market with, uh, with this type of handle on this product. So it also has a very good yield in, um, it's going to weigh about uh, 17 pounds or so in uh, fairly uh, early maturity at 95 days. So this is probably another one you'd want to, you know, harvest and get into storage you know, as soon as it's ready. So, uh, and also uh, it has a few warts on it. They're very sparse and shallow, but they're, um, you know, they are, uh, they are present on this pumpkin. So it's not truly smooth. There are a few warts on there to give it some character. And the last variety I'll talk about is the uh, Little Pumpkimon. Uh, this variety has been on the market for uh, several years, but it's still very unique with that uh, white background and orange stripe on it. It's uh, got concentrated set in kind of a semi-bush um, uh, habitat, so it can uh, be easy to harvest and has a very sturdy stem on it. And uh, it is, uh, very durable and uh, will store store well, you know, well past uh, Thanksgiving also. And um, I think that's uh, pretty much it on uh, on the varieties. So uh, just you know, reiterate all these uh, varieties have great uh, you know marketable yield, good uh, storability, and uh, good profitability. So um, 
I'll turn it back over to Mike for some uh, discussion on new varieties. So yeah, so uh, while we do have an amazing lineup, uh, our work is not done. We still keep pressing forward, and every do every year we do extensive variety trials throughout the USA and. Uh, Here's just a, a, a little smattering of some of the pumpkins, uh, some of the new pumpkins that we had come off one of our last uh, last years, some of our trials here in the Northeast. So as you can see, we're, we're still working hard on the jack, the traditional orange jack-o'-lanterns with some very uh, uh, just impressive handles. We continue to look in that uh, um, cross section of the market. But as you know, as we, as we kind of focused on the last half of these varieties is we're looking more and more into the specialties. Um, we seem to have more and more growers coming to us looking for that what's new, that different color, whether it be yellow, tan, striped, or into the warded segment too. So <clears throat> I just... Uh, just want to you know communicate that you know we have a very big team uh, behind this. A lot of exciting things coming. Um, these are just a smattering of some of them that are closer, uh, getting further advanced in the program, and that we have a lot of exciting things to come. So stay tuned. Uh, keep checking our website. Uh, keep in touch with the folks at Harris Seeds because we're going to have some uh, a number of really exciting variety launches over the next two to three years. It's really going to be an exciting time and really looking forward to it. So um, with that, I think I'll pass over to the folks at Harris Seeds. Great. Thank you, Michael. So we also wanted to share some grower testimonials for some of these varieties that you've seen today. Um, some comments that we've had from customers like yourselves on their success with these varieties. So first is Spectre. So again, that's that off-white, slightly warded variety that was presented before. And Ruth says, I will sing Spectre's praises as a wonderful upright to add to pumpkin displays. And we love the off-white color. It's perfect to pair with pinks, corals, and blues for a mix folks love. So that's one of my favorite things about Spectre as well is even though it has that off-white color, it pairs really nicely with a wide variety of colors, but from your oranges and yellows off to your, um, your more pastel colors. Then um, from Peterson P, we have Warty Goblin, another that was shown earlier. My sister and I run a pumpkin patch out in California. Every year we plant Warty Goblin pumpkins because they always get picked over really fast. Fabulous variety. We always get a kick out of the wacky warts. And that's one thing that John mentioned is that the warts um, are always very interesting. Depending on your season, you might have more or less. Sometimes we see warts growing on warts. Um, so they really are very interesting and they do draw people in. Then Bueller G has a comment on Apprentice, the most perfect cute little pumpkins available to grow. They produce lots of little pumpkins per plant too, each one perfect. And so you can see from the picture and from Michael's comments, um, Apprentice is very small, um, easy to hold, and they're extremely uniform. So you'll have a ton of them and they all will be very consistently sized and shaped. Um, then lastly, Douglas A on Little Pumpkin Mom, Excellent producer on plastic can get 10 plus per plant at recommended spacing. Excellent to mix with an orange and white mini. Keeps well in bulk bins. Um, so again, that little pumpkin mon is the mini white with the orange uh, ribbing. And so it is really flexible and again, a really heavy yielder uh, and one of my personal favorites for decorating for the fall holidays. So we hope that just like these growers, you'll give some of these a try and hopefully have um, good testimonials of your own in the future. Okay, I think we can go on to the next slide. Okay, so next we're going to go through some of the questions that you all have presented um, as a part of our Q&A. So please continue to submit your questions through the Q&A. If you added some through the chat, we've been watching that as well. Um, so we're happy to take whatever questions you have. Um, with that, we'll start with a few that we've received already. Um, wondering, Michael or John, if you can give any input on how best to trim the handles or how to keep the handles good after picking so they don't shrink up. 
Sure, I can, I can uh, field that one. So um, what we really suggest all the time, especially with the larger jack-o'-lantern types is um, uh, if you can avoid it, not cutting uh, the stem right in the middle of the stem, but actually go back on the vine and clip it from the vine just before the knuckle of the stem. That helps the stem cure down, dry down properly, and it'll stay on there for a much longer time uh, in most cases. So <clears throat> the, the second the second, second part of that is, you know, any kind of washing with bleach solution. I did see a, a question as far as cleaning. If you want to last for a long time, a quick bleach solution or Windex, anything with some ammonia just to clean them off, uh, that does help too. Uh, and that will help the, let the, uh, that will help the, uh, <clears throat> the stems hold up as well. But. Perfect, thank you, Michael. Yes, that was another question we had about cleaning um, out of the field. And I would agree, it definitely helps hold up the fruit um, for a longer amount of time on your stand, but also will help them hold longer for your customers as well if you give them a little bit of a more thorough cleaning than just brushing off the dirt. Um, but again, it depends on what's best for your operation. Uh, another question we had was if any of the varieties presented today are edibles or if they're good for pie pumpkins. Uh, I can probably take that question. Um, I would say that uh, field trip would probably be the most likely um, out of this lineup, but uh, one of our legacy varieties, uh, Mystic Plus, uh, which is still available, has uh, the highest uh, bricks of, of any of our lineup that we've found. In uh, so that would be uh, best for the uh, for the you know pie or uh, or any any other uh, recipe you would want to make out of them. But uh, the true uh, you know pie pumpkin pie filling is is made out of a Hubbard squash type on the you know commercial in the commercial realm. So uh, but for what we have to offer, I would say Mystic Plus would probably be the, the best. And then uh, Field Trip would be one of our more you know modern varieties for that use. Okay, thank you, John. Um, the next question is if you could address the treatments and forms of seed that are available, do you offer far more treatment? Um, are there organic forms of these varieties available? I, I can take that one too, Mike. Um, yeah, just starting out uh, from the least uh, treatment, we do offer untreated. Um, we do have to order that uh, quite a ways in advance to make sure that we, uh, you know, have some stock to offer as untreated. The uh, the seed is not produced organically, so it's not really a certified organic seed. It's um, there are some you know conventional production methods used in the creation of the seed, so we can't really certify it as organic, but it. It is uh, definitely offered untreated if we can uh, get your order in early enough. Then up from there, we uh, offer the thyrium treatment that has a <clears throat> film coating on it that uh, helps um, the seed flow in your planter and then keeps the uh, thyrium on in place uh, a little bit better. And then the next step up from there is the far more uh, DI-400 treatment, which has uh, three insecticides and the, um, the cruiser treatment, or I'm sorry, three fungicides and then the insecticide, which uh, contains a chemical that's found in cruiser. And that will uh, give you protection against the uh, cucumber beetles uh, when the plant is uh, from emergence to uh, just tipping stage with, you know, where it has about uh, five or six leaves on it uh, about 30 days after planting so that, um, so that will ward off the cucumber beetles in, uh, you know, help you manage the, uh, the insects uh, early on. And also, uh, also helps control some of the uh, below ground insects also in, um, you know, to help them get a, a healthier start. So those are the uh, three treatment options that we offer is the untreated thyram and then the far more DI-400. Great, thank you, John. Um, so the next question will be about powdery mildew. Um, give me one second so I can um, quote it exactly. Can you explain the difference between powdery mildew tolerance, resistance to PM, and intermediate resistance? And then a second part of that question is if you mix varieties in your field that have different levels of powdery mildew resistance, can that have an impact? 
Maybe you want to put that one to uh, James. Sure, sure. I'd be happy to to take that one. So, this is a this is a great question. So, tolerance, resistance. We see these these buzzwords um, tossed around. There's a a big difference, and kind of a good way to think about it is if if we look at tolerance first, you have a a plant, and um, the plant is able to grow. So, basically, tolerance is the plant is able to grow in spite of the pathogen being on the plant. So, you can have, for example, powdery. Um, progressing as it would normally in a susceptible plant, and yet the plant is able to produce marketable fruit. So it's, it's able to grow in spite of the pathogen. Resistance, on the other hand, is more of the pathogen fighting back. So the plant will sense, so a resistant plant will, re, will sense the pathogen, whether it's spores or infection, and it will do things to mitigate the spread of the, the pathogen on it in its tissue. So in some cases, and in a lot of cases, it will kill off or sequester portions of itself um, in order to limit that infection spread. And the term intermediate resistance is, is we think of, you can think of resistance as, as really grades. You have completely susceptible and completely resistant on one end. Um, so susceptible on one end, completely resistant on the other. So completely resistant, you get no pathogen progression, like the pathogen just does nothing. To susceptible where you get complete, you'll have, for example, powdery, you'll see susceptibility as just complete you know, powdery all, all over every leaf, all over the stems, that would be a completely susceptible one. An intermediate somewhere in the middle. Um, something that we would consider completely resistant, resistant, you wouldn't necessarily have to spray for the pathogen. Um, something in the middle, for example, intermediate resistance like we claim, you're gonna get a, a, a much, much more reduced growth of the pathogen, but perhaps maybe not enough to preclude spraying altogether, but it may limit the, the amount of spray that you're gonna have to do. Um, so the second, it, it, I, I should comment as well, if you wanna do a little experiment in your own fields, put munchkin, munchkin is notoriously susceptible to powdery next to something like Hermes, one of our binning pumpkins. And you're gonna see a bit, you'll see a really big difference between a susceptible and, a, and an intermediate resistant um, pumpkin. So it, kind of the consequence of a mixing variety. So if we have it, for example, a, a munchkin that's highly susceptible, susceptible in a field with other, um, intermediate or susceptible types, intermediate resistant or susceptible types is those, those susceptible types are gonna be a source of, of spores that are gonna drift around and, and be blown or splashed onto to other plants. Um, so you're gonna get a higher infection rate in general if you include some of these susceptible lines in your field. Um, it's, it's just kind of the, the nature of, of having a, a really strong source of, path, source of pathogen in the field. I, I don't think that should, I, I should catch, caution that or a caveat that with, I don't think that should limit you. I, I would say it's okay to mix, just know that the pressure is going to be a little bit higher um, in those cases. So, and I, and I would be careful putting susceptibles right next to susceptibles. It, it's good to have, you know, mix it up and, and maybe break it up with some intermediate resistance and resistant types in between. Or if, if you can put other intercrop with even di different species, you may be able to, um, it may provide a, a little bit of a barrier between your susceptible varieties. Great, thank you, James, for explaining those differences. Um, a similar question to follow up with you, James, um, regarding mixing varieties in the same field. Can this have an impact on the base varieties? What, I mean, what sort of impact are we talking about? Is it talking yield or? Just a general see, question about mixing varieties in the same field. What impact can that have on the base variety? So if you've ever seen any sort of impact with having mixed um, items right close to one another in the field? Not particularly. I mean, I mean, I think we have a really great example of mixing stuff in the field um, in, in Davis for our breeder trials. We, we have everything in the sun out there in plots, but side by side mixed. Um, I would think that, and I frequently see in, in uh, particularly in decorative growers fields, they just have everything out there and they just spread it out there and, and you've got all kinds of different plants and different growth habits growing next to each other. I would think um, aside from the, the pathogen discussion, you know, the comment I just made about the pathogens, the impact could be if you had something that had a much larger growth habit, like a Kronos, for example, something that's really gonna spread out it could start to you know, impede or, or grow into the, the area of a much smaller plant, um, which could affect size in, in those plants. So there, there could be, and we, we do do this for the breeding. We have all the large pumpkins tend to be next to each other and the you know, medium and smaller pumpkins are, are segregated in the field. 
because we don't want the, the size differences between those plants to impact the yield or other traits we're interested in looking at. Great, thank you. Yes, I would agree from our trialing, we don't ever see an impact on the end products, um, but it is really mindful, to, it's good to be mindful of the size of your plants because they definitely do need to have enough space um, to set the, the yields and the size that you're expecting. Great, thank you, James. Um, the next question I will push to Michael or to John is about plastic mulch. Do you know if any certain types of pumpkins are affected negatively by black plastic mulch? Uh, I, can, I can take that one, Mike. You can uh, add anything you'd like. Um, I think, um, you know, growers are very success, successful with uh, black plastic mulch and uh, drip irrigation in uh, it helps to uh, you know warm up the soil temperatures and in the cold weather. You know if you have a cold front front going through, and then the uh, drip irrigation you know does uh, quite a bit to uh, mitigate the dry times. And normally they'll the growers will put this up on a raised bed. You know when they're using the plastic. Uh, the only uh, downside I could see is if uh, sometimes pumpkins are sensitive to uh, heat set. So if that uh, black plastic, you know, causes a few degrees difference where it makes or breaks the pollination uh, that could have a negative impact. But I think uh, by and large, I think the black plastic uh, could be an advantage. Uh, whether it pays for itself or not, I really can't say. We've never done really any trials. I've never really seen anything where I've seen it uh, that it definitely pays or not. And it also, uh, helps hold down the weeds, you know, right in the row. So it's a little bit easier with the weed management. And uh, the pumpkins that happen to be on the plastic are uh, obviously going to be cleaner, but the ones down in the in the valleys and, the, you know, are still going to be in the dirt. So that's going to be kind of mixed on the uh, cleanliness of the pumpkins at harvest. So uh, that's unless somebody else has something to add to that. That's kind of what, uh, what I know about it. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, a similar question you had mentioned about using drip irrigation with plastic. Um, are there any varieties discussed today that are particularly good for droughts when irrigation is not an option? Mm -hmm. I guess I'll, I could take a stand at that too. I think um, Pumpkins generally like dry weather better than wet weather. So, uh, you know, you have less disease in a dry weather environment and uh, seems like you can grow th through some pretty good droughts and, um, you know, you still come up with a crop unless it's a very extreme case of drought. But uh, as far as one variety over another, I don't think there's uh, really much difference that we can cite as far as uh, yield variance on uh, between varieties. So. Uh, Anyone else from the Harris Brand team want to chime in on that? Yeah, not really in my experience, no. Okay, thank you, John, for that. Um, the next question I'll present, um, maybe throw this one to Michael, is regarding pumpkin cronus. We've had difficulty growing cronus. We don't get the yield we expected. Any suggestions? Yeah, I think, you know, the, the big thing with Cronus, if, if you want the size, I think was in regards to the yield, Cronus definitely is a, a little more, uh, if as you look at, if we do talk about heat tolerant varieties, that one does set, it's a little more finicky with its set. So that's often maybe what we'll see when there's lower yield. Um, in regards to size, um, probably one of the biggest mistakes is not giving Cronus enough in row and between row space. Um, it needs some square footage in order, in order to get you the size uh, that you're really looking for out of that variety. But uh, it is a little more finier, finicky, like I say, with the heat set and yield that will directly affect the yield. Um, again, I'll, I'll point to, we have some new varieties coming down the pipe that we're looking to improve on that though. And Chris and I can add to that, that uh, Cronus tends to be kind of a, you know, responds well to, uh, to management. So if um, you know, really take good care of the vines um, from backing up from harvest, you know, try to, you know, keep the, uh, you know, keep the management with, uh, you know, 
on your fungicide program and insecticide program, you know, especially late with the uh, with the later insects like the aphids. Um, if you can manage those, uh, the Cronus will respond well to that. It'll do a lot better. And then, you know, through uh, weed control, you know, that is, is very important. So it's not competing. And then also uh, starting out even before planting, make sure that your, uh, you know, your uh, soil profile and soil tests are uh, are in line with the uh, with your pH and your fertility levels. So it's uh, it's one that responds, uh, you know, very well to, uh, to to more intense management. Okay, thank you both. Um, another specific variety question I'll present next is regarding Crunchkin. I have grown Crunchkin and it was light orange with blotches. However, Munchkin was brighter orange and had green flecks. Did you say Crunchkin turns darker orange as it sits and what causes the green flecks on the mini pumpkins? Um, I, I, I wouldn't say, uh, well, just real quick on the, the green flecks, that's just some virus coming through. Um, I will point to, uh, both munchkin, uh, two of our varieties, munchkin and crunchkin do every now and then, if uh, there is high virus pressure, will exhibit a little bit of that green flecking. Uh, it's, I've never seen it become so bad that, you know, it's, you're not going to want to be able to sell the fruit, but uh, it does show up every now and then. But again, I, I point to, we have some new varieties uh, coming uh, within the next couple of years in that class that show excellent virus uh, tolerance that, uh, eliminate that green flecking. As far, as far as the darkness of the color, I, I haven't seen that, you know, leaving it on longer dark, really darkens it up significantly. I mean, you still have that unique modeling, but I don't know if John, if you had anything else on that one. No, I think it's just uh, what you're seeing is probably a result of the virus, you know, attacking the fruit and, uh, you know, causing the color changes in modeling and then different shades of orange. So it's, uh, but like Mike said, some of our new uh, munchkin types uh, will have some virus uh, resistance to them. And then um, I kind of forgot to mention early on that some of our varieties uh, do have uh, some virus tolerance, that, you know, that are coming from uh, at least one parent. So we do, uh, we are trying to uh, increase the virus tolerance as we go along and, um, you know, trying to move into these uh, munchkin, munchkin types, but uh, they do kind of, if you can market, won't market them. They do have a unique look, but uh, it's with the uh, virus. Sometimes it's uh, beyond you know control. What can what can be done about it? Great, thank you both for your thoughts on that. Um, I'll direct the next question to James. We have um, some questions about the new varieties that you're working on. Have you experimented at all with black pumpkins or with any other? Um, can you discuss some of the other features that you're breeding towards? Are you focusing on color, on warts, or um, if you could give us some idea of what you've got in the works? Certainly. So um, just the answer to the black pumpkins is yes. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a difficult, I, I have to say from a breeding standpoint, it's a challenging one, black pumpkins in particular. It's, it's quite challenging because when you say black, you really mean just a super dark green that holds. Um, so it, that's been challenging. We have what I would call super dark green pumpkins, but the, the color tends to lighten over time, unacceptably, I would think. Um, and as you look out on the market, there are some black pumpkins, I, I'm using air quotes here, black pumpkins on the market, but really dark green pumpkins. Uh, but the challenge is to get that into a, a good jack-o'-lantern um, uh, look. So, so far, a lot of them kind of have more of a Kind of an acorn squashish, and you can see somewhere some where some of the genetics are coming from. And we're, to be honest, frankly, in a, in a similar situation, trying to move some of those dark, dark green genetics into more of a good jack o' lantern shape and, and uh, look. So the answer is yes. In fact, we are we're trialing a new um, black pumpkin this year. Um, it's not quite a. It's, it's got a very interesting look with some warts on it. Um, but it's not what I would say a, a black jack-o'-lantern yet, but it's certainly something we're working on. As for other decorative, decorative so decorative is, it's a whimsical is the, probably the best term for it. There's all kinds of interesting things that we see every year in the, what I would call the decorative group of pumpkins, um, where the colors are also are always very interesting. So pastel types and tans and warties. And we saw some, uh, a snapshot of of some of the newer pumpkin, pumpkins coming out. There was a yellow pumpkin, that tan pumpkin. Um, 
we have other you know combinations of things coming out or in the pipeline right now um, from a decorative standpoint but again it's with decorative it's the weirder the better in some cases so it's it's an extremely fun thing to as a breeder to step back and, and to breed for these decorative types uh, the bread and butter what we do of course is are the the, the jack-o-lanterns those binning pumpkins the orange carvers but um, as I look across the portfolio, I mean, it's all fun, but man, those decoratives are really interesting to work with. Great. Thank you, James. Yes, we're really excited. Um, we get to see a lot of these varieties um, on the Harris Seeds team each year. And so it's, it's always really great to see some of the new products that we're working on um, and we'll be able to present to you guys, our customers here in the near future. So. Thank you, James, for all your hard work to come up with some really cool new items. Uh, okay, so we'll wrap up here with just one more question. Um, again, if, if we didn't get to your question, we will follow up with you afterwards and we're sorry for the, the time constraint there. Um, we had a few questions come in about the status of our current stock um, regarding Harris Seeds and um, some pumpkins that you may have placed orders for and haven't quite received yet. Um, so. In our case for the hair seed side, we it will really depend on which items you've purchased. Um, and so in some cases, some things have come in a little bit later than we would prefer. Um, so we're still waiting for those to come in and get them packaged and turned back around to you. Um, on the other hand, there are several items that we do have really great supply of. And so if you um, do wish to place an order with us, we should be able to fill that quite promptly. Uh, if there's something that we've talked about today or another variety that um, you are interested in and we don't have it in stock at this time, um, odds are good that we have some more on the way and it should be in in just a couple of weeks. Um, currently, we're seeing some turnaround times on orders um, that don't have back orders to be um, about seven to 10 days just based on order volume. So we appreciate everyone's patience as we work through, but um, we'll definitely be able to get your seed to you before you're ready to plant it. Uh, come spring. So we appreciate your patience there. Um, okay, so we will move on to the next slide then. So as promised, um, as a thank you to you for participating in the webinar, you um, are automatically qualified for a free gift with your purchase. So if you place an order on the Hair Seeds website for any of these hair spray and pumpkins that were featured today, you will automatically receive a um, custom coffee tumbler. And so if you place your order using the same um, email address that you used at the time that you registered for this webinar, you won't have to do anything more. Uh, the system will automatically recognize you as being a webinar participant and then that um, free gift will be added to your purchase. Um, this will be a while supplies last situation um, one gift per customer and it will um, ship with, with your order um, or potentially separately. Um, and then, like I'd mentioned before, we are working with a little bit of a delayed turnaround time. So all of these orders will be subject to uh, that same turnaround time that we're working with for all of our general orders. Um, we also really appreciate your time today to participate in this webinar, and we hope that after the conclusion of the webinar, you'll stick around and answer a few questions that we have in a survey for you. Um, you if you do complete the survey and your email address is um, on file from the webinar, you'll be entered to win a prize um, for helping us and giving us that feedback as well. Um, I will I guess divert to the other members of the panel. Is there anything else that we need to address before we conclude? Uh, no, just like to add, uh, thank the uh, you know the customers uh, for their business over the years and the support of the you know the Harris brand lineup. And uh, again, I'd like to thank uh, Harris Seeds for uh, you know making this webinar possible and uh, getting the information out. Great, yes, thank you all in the Harris, um, the, the Harris Moran Seed Company team. Um, thank you to our Harris Seeds team for putting this together uh, and for all of you for participating. Like I'd mentioned, if you had asked us a question and we didn't get to it on the live webinar, we will be uh, contacting you separately to answer those questions. 
Uh, and we hope that you will um, go check out some of these varieties we talked about today, as well as others on the Harris Seeds website. Thank you so much for your time.